1920. 1920. And what is your current address? Where do you live? In Natick. In Natick? Yeah. And um, are you married? Yes. Do you have children? Seven. Seven children? <laughs> Grandchildren? Yes. How many? Uh, Fourteen. Fourteen. Do you have any great grandchildren? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll, bet that, I'll bet they're working on it. Yeah, oh, yeah. A nice, sounds like a nice family. Where were you born, Bob? And in uh, Boston, it was Roxbury, but they call it Boston uh, back then, you know? Yeah. And uh, then we moved to Wellesley after, then up here. And, and what, did, what did your father do? What, what kind of work well, he did he used to do? Be, uh, he used to work at the, made uh, house coats and stuff like that, manufacturing in Boston. And it's kind of uh, tailoring work or no, that? no, just uh, sewing machines, you know. Uh, oh, sewing machines. And uh, yeah. women work for them, so make up <clears throat> house coats and all that kind of stuff. And and what about your mother? Did she? She, she was home bringing up the family. Yeah, right. right. What was uh, what was your growing up like? Uh, tell us about your neighborhood there. What, what, what <laughs> well, did you do as a kid? It was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. I grew up in uh, right down Rice Street in uh, Wellesley. When I was four years old, we moved there. And, uh, and we did every, everything, everything a kid does, you know? Go out and play uh, football, baseball, all that kind of stuff. And but no TV. No, oh, no, 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 no TV in them days. You were outside playing games, <laughs> yeah, right? right? Right. And uh, when we were supposed to come home, we came home. And we were, you know, we had to buy a man of P's and Q's, but we were, we were allowed to do most like everything everybody else could do. Did your family ever go back into Boston to do anything? No, Any, no, no, no. You stayed? Stayed out here in, west, in west, the suburbs. Yeah. yeah. And when did you come to Natick? Uh, let's see, in 60, 60, uh, 64, I think. 63, 64. So you were, you were a middle-aged guy when you oh, came yeah. Out, right? oh yeah, yeah. We could, uh, <clears throat> Did you go to the, the, the schools in Wellesley? Yeah. Tell uh, us about that. Were well, they crowded? Uh, well, I went to school, but I wasn't, I wasn't that brilliant. And, uh, and <laughs> I got up to, in the high school, I, I quit school and went to work. And was, uh, but other than that, I had fun at school. Can you remember about what year you quit school and went to work? Uh, 30, 30, let's see, 38. I think it was 38, 1938. What kind of work did you do? Work for a contractor. Uh, you know, digging trenches, you know, working, build houses and stuff like that. Construction work. Yeah, construction work. Right? Yeah. This is 1938, and in 1938, we were pretty close to a war in Europe. Yeah, right. Um, you worked for this guy somewhere in, in Wellesley. Yeah. 39, 40, how long were you Yeah, working? right there, about, uh, <clears throat> until I went in, until I went in the service. I went in in 41. Okay, can you remember where you were on Pearl Harbor Day? Yeah, playing football on the field. And, and, Sunday and, morning, <laughs> Sunday. Yeah. It was on a Sunday. We were on a, on a football pl field playing, uh, just a game, you know, all the kids on Wright Street. We had a pickup game, tossing the ball around him. And all of a sudden, my father came running over, walking over, and said they were at war, declared war with Japan and that. And if I figured it right, you're about 21 years old. Yeah. Yeah. It's about 21. And this is December 7th, 1941. Yeah. And on your chart, um, you entered the service on the 15th. Yeah. So now tell us this. You went home, your father told us about. Yeah, the war, we were at the war, war. Yeah, yeah. Did you talk to him and your mom about you're going to go in the service? Yeah. I said, well, yeah. What did they say? Oh, no, no, it was fine with them. It was all, it was all right with my father. And, and, did, my, and, and how about the guys you were playing football with? Yeah, most of them went in. Most what, of what, what did you talk about? Let's all rush down well, to the recruiting station. Well, all excited about it. Yeah. Yeah, and we all went. After the while, we went home to our different homes, and and then we just saw, I saw uh, my, some of my buddies the next day 
I wanted to go in the Navy, you know. And then the Southern War the Coast Guard and, and stuff. And, and that's the way it was. Why, why the Navy? I love the Navy. Why? I, I, because I wanted to get in when I was 16. And I said I couldn't go in because I had flat feet. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you had to be in good condition then. Yeah, they wouldn't take you. It. Were just 16? Would, yeah, would 16 have, years old, I wanted to go in. I, I would went. they take you in at 16? Yeah, at that time they would, yeah. Oh, and so on December 15th, 1941, a week after Pearl Harbor, where did you go to sign up? In Boston. At the, what, was there a recruiting station there? Then? Yeah, there was the, what's the name of that the building in there? Post office building in there. I think that's where the Navy place was. And who went with you? Well, that's, uh, I met a kid on a train from Framingham. We sat no, together. No, who went with you to the recruiting office? All by yourself? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're, none of your buddies went down with no, you? No, no. I went by myself. I was going to the Navy. Okay. And then you I, sign up, they take you. Yeah. And. Did you take physicals and everything else right there? Right there, they, uh, a quick physical, you know, and, and they uh, they looked at you and, and they said you're all right, and then you have to uh, about the uh, have to repeat about the flag, you know. <laughs> what do they say when they, you have to take the oath? Yeah, right? the oath. Yeah, 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 yeah right there. And we did that, and then. Uh, and there was a whole group of us in there then. About how many? Oh, there were 20 guys, 30 guys? Oh, yeah, about 30 then, yeah. All signed up on the same day? Yeah. And yeah. then did, were you allowed to go home then? No, no. The, from there, they gave us a, a ticket, uh, uh, well, a lunch ticket to go down. They, they put us on a bus, a train or a bus, a train, I think, and went down to, down to Newport, Rhode Island. We got oh, up there. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and then they give you enough money to, you know, enough uh, money for the guy. There was one man in charge, one guy, and we had to go eat and they paid for it. And then, then we went into Newport. Okay, tell us about arriving. You're a sailor now in the United States <laughs> Navy, right? Yeah. Okay, you show up at Newport. In the, yes. What was it like? What did they do with you? Well, at first we went in and, uh, and they, they checked you in, you know. Then they got to strip down and they were going to check you over. You had to go through that routine there. And then uh, we uh, it was at night now. We were, this is at night. We got there. And then they uh, uh, said that we were going to all give you clothes and then we're going to sit. You're going to sleep sleep there. We thought we were going to sleep on the floor. And then, then they woke, woke us up in the morning and they checked us all over again for another thing. And then they. Uh, Good shots then. I think they gave us some shots. And then we were signed to a, a, a barracks, you know. We were, okay. What happened to your flat feet? Oh, they, they were all right there. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That's fine, right? Yeah. Right. It was all right. They, they took anybody then, you know, during the war. They, they, it was uh, flat feet didn't mean nothing. Tell us about the training and uh, what they the, did with you. Well, going in, going in to sign up? Yeah, no, when you were at Newport, and you were in a barracks. Oh, the training, yeah. yeah. Oh, well. well, we went in, and we were only there. Uh, one, we went in and, you know, you go to the drills, you know. Not, not, not the drills like the army, but like the drills, you know. And then you had shots. You took shots every day. And then uh, we, had, we had certain things we had to do. Me and, me and my buddy, we had to go around and bring oil to the other barracks, you know, at night. So they had the oil for the, the heat, the tents. And then uh, after that, uh, we were only there for you know, maybe eight days. And from there, then they put us on a train, assigned us to us. Oh, they had us all on the yard, and they, we went from the alphabet, uh, like the, the N's and the M's and P's went together. So we went to uh, a ship, uh, we sat outside to the, the Lansdale. It was just, uh, where, uh, where was the Lansdale? The Lansdale was up in uh, Casco Bay, Maine. Okay, and you, you mentioned a buddy 
yeah. uh, a minute ago. Yeah. Uh, did you make friends there? That uh, no, I made the friends on the on the train going into Boston. And and how about did, did anybody stay with you during the course yeah. of the war? Yeah, he did. Uh, this, this buddy of mine from Framingham, me and him we were together the, for for two years in the ship. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Okay, good. so you're up on a ship called the Lansdale. Yeah. What kind of ship was that? Destroyer. Had you ever seen a destroyer before? No. What was your job on the destroyer? I was on the deck. I was on the deck force. And after eight days of training at Newport, you you were ready to be a sailor on a destroyer. <laughs> we we were a sailor. We went on the ship and we were we were a sailor then. That's it. But we were. What what kind of work uh, as a well, deck? Well, yeah. well, you know. Wash the decks, sweep the decks, clean up, uh, make make lifeline. You know the lines on the the lifelines and make, repair them, and do everything. Well, tie up a ship when it comes in when it comes in the port. Tie the, you know throw the throw the line out and they tie it up and they wrap it up. And, yeah, had and, had you ever been on a ship before? No, no. And were were you looking forward to going out on an ocean that's going? Oh yeah, I was. <laughs> I'm really happy to be on there. Okay, yeah. where did you go? Well, when we got the well, we we went from uh, Newport around by train, and went all the way to Casco Bay, Maine, and then we uh, the ship was anchored out and. We went on the got on the ship by a, a boat, you know. Uh, okay, and well. and where did you go when you sailed? Well, we sailed from there. We went out for a couple of practice runs, and you know, out to sea. We don't where the carrier was uh, way up in Maine. There, we were all off the coast of Maine, and the carrier was out there. And, uh, there were uh, two on uh, flights, flights off the deck. We, we were patrolling around, make sure that the, you know nothing could get near the ship. Were you, um, were you looking for submarines? Oh yeah, or? always, always. So you were protecting the carrier? Yeah, that's exactly. And they were flying planes off the carrier? Yeah. The, the, were, was part of your job to, if anybody went in the drink, oh, yeah, you would pull them out? Oh yeah, be there, sure. Yeah. yeah. But we, uh, they must, you must have been going all the time. Oh no, yeah. No rest. Well, we yeah. went there and then you're on duty and then off duty and on duty, you know. You had your, you had four on and four off, you know, when you were on out to sea. That was your duties. Tell you us, know, a, tell us about the food on board. Well, the food was good. I, was it? I liked the food. Yeah, it was good. We had regular meals, regular, and it wasn't, you know, you sat down in a in a, in a room, you know, like a little uh, below little, the decks. Little there was a, the, yeah, it was yeah. a lunch room like. Sat there and had a had our meals. Where did you sleep? Well, at first we went on the ship. It was crowded, you know. We slept at the in our hammocks in the lunchroom. <laughs> and then, then after they got straightened out, then we got got a bunk in the back of the ship, uh, you know, in the quarters, the deck force headquarters, and and the firemen, and and they had their own quarters, so. Can you tell us about uh, how long you were out at sea uh, with with this carrier or with other ships? Oh, well, we went on uh, we went on a big convoy from uh, from New York. We took the biggest convoy out of New York. Uh, went right down to the Panama Canal, and we sailed with that uh, all the way down down there. And then the, the convoy went through the Panama Canal, and we stayed on this side. And we came back and did more convoy duty back here in the States. New York, Panama, New York, Panama, is that what well, you Well, New York, either that or Norfolk, Virginia, with convoy going out, we'd be there. We'd always be on the East Coast there, going out from anywhere. And tell, uh, tell us, uh, Bob, about, you, you're on a, the, your destroyer. And you're, you're a, a working seaman now in the United mm -hmm. States Navy. Mm -hmm. Tell us about what it feels like to look out and see all these ships, all uh, these ships around. I don't know. Was, what, what did you feel about this? Well, I don't know. I never had, I never got to have had that feel. I knew we were at war, you know. Yeah. But we, I knew we were taking ships uh, on a convoy somewhere, 
but I didn't know where, you know, till we got there. How many other destroyers or uh, cruisers or oh, battleships or what? Uh, well, we had, uh, on, the, on that convoy, we had a whole squadron of destroyers. I think there's 12, 16 or 12 destroyers in a squadron now, or, or division, whatever. And then, uh, then you'd be right, right around the corner. You'd be, uh, uh, the, the, head, the head destroyers would be up here. Then would be here, 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 till you get right back to the aft. And then you stay on the outside of them, outside of that convoy, and you just, you will watch out for submarines or whatever. And then we have a, we had a battleship with us, and we had a cruiser, a couple of cruisers. They went through, they went through with the convoy. Well, we stayed on this side, our did, destroyers. Did just you stay on this side, or did all the destroyers yeah, stay all, on most, this side? Yeah, most of our destroyers stayed on the Atlantic side, and the rest of the ships went through to the Pacific, the convoy and the, and the rest of the ships. Do you, do you happen to know uh, who picked them up on the other side to protect them? Well, it had to not, be had to be destroyers that picked uh, them up on the other yeah. side. And uh, any idea where they went from there? Well, uh, later we heard that the that that, that convoy went uh, to the islands down the Water Canal. That was the biggest. That was the big shipment they were going to go. And so that down. was uh, August of '42. Yeah, that was uh, that was quite a. So you're at sea all this time now. That's. Uh, that's yeah, a lot well, of trips back and forth. Yeah. Did you ever get off the ship and get any liberty? Oh yeah, sure. Every time we hit a port, they, you'd get liberty. You know, you get a, a, a stop at the side. We get a, get that night off of liberty, and then the next night would be the port side. So either either you were on the port or stop at the you know division. That's why. That's how you got your tell liberty. Tell us tell us some of the towns that you uh, got to see. Did you see? In New York City, oh, yeah. Norfolk. Yeah, we saw Norfolk, and New yeah. York. We saw well, every every place we went, we we stopped anyway. The destroyers got in the get in the port, you know, and we went to, got in the Panama, and uh, and we come and we come back. We got into Boston one time, and then we went from Boston up to uh, Halifax and picked up a convoy out of Halifax and went over. Went over to Iceland and and Britain. Okay, don't don't go too fast no. on that. I, I want to hear about that. Yeah, they went to Britain. So, yeah. you about the fall? You've been in the Navy almost a year now. Is that right? If if you escorted a, a Guadalcanal bunch, yeah. let's say that's the summer of of forty two. Yeah, well, we were. I was in the Navy. Yeah, about just about about a half a year then. When they went, when they went down. Okay, and now you you've been mostly escorting ships. Yeah. And now all of a sudden you're you're going up yourself to Iceland. When well, we went, yeah. to, we went up. We took a call. Halifax, Iceland. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. we went up to. Uh, I want I want to tell you about the the Halifax. When we went up to when we went to go to Halifax, the ship was in the winter time. And the ship was going up there, and it got all iced over. The bow got iced over, so the captain, we had to, the captain got everybody on the ship to break ice off the ship because it was starting to get down pretty low. And then by the time we got to Halifax, it was really right in the middle of winter. It was cold anyway, but then we got there all right. And so we picked up a convoy and we went to Britain, uh, you, know, you know, England, whatever. And we left the left the convoy off. I think they were mostly soldiers and supplies and everything. And let them off. And then we either half half of our division, uh, our squadron, destroyers, they went up into uh, they went up up around uh, Russia, toward Russia, get us to bring in some, and half of us went up the other way. Went up toward uh, Iceland. So we went to Iceland in the middle of the winter. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. That was not, 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 not just the routine trip. <laughs> so we went up to Iceland, and up there we got we got uh, come orders from somewhere out from either the, the Quincy or the battleship was with the. We were going to look for the Bis uh, the German big battleship, the Bismarck. Yes. That the one that sunk the 
the British ships. The Hood. Yeah, the Hood, yeah. yeah. Well, we, she was up in, a, in that area. In the Denmark Straits. Yeah, she was up, yeah. She was up there somewhere in, around Iceland, Denmark. And we were supposed to, uh, was, was, we were supposed to get her. If we find her, we we're supposed to sink her. That's, now this is this is the command of all the other ships too. Right. To destroy. So we went up there, and our captain came on the on the microphone. He said uh, to the, us, uh, he says the, all the sailors, he said, if we see the Bismarck, we're gonna ram it. We're not gonna shoot them. We're gonna ram it, and that was it. And everybody's. You know, we're all, you know, you know young fellows. Did, did you think personally that was a good idea? <laughs> we didn't think about it. We just, it just happened. That's the way it was going to be. Wouldn't, I'm not second guessing the captain of the year ship, <laughs> but I think if a destroyer rammed the Bismarck, the Bismarck wouldn't even know it. Yeah, well, it would blow up because we had torpedoes on our ship and everything. Yeah. We had uh, 10, I think, 10 or 12 torpedoes on our what ship. What was the weather like when you were out looking for the Bismarck? Oh, it was cold, real cold. It, it, I, Bad, I, it was choppy. And it was foggy, a lot of fog, wasn't there? Well, uh, not too much fog up there. Not up there. With a lot of icebergs. How long did you look for the Bismarck till you heard that it had been hit? And, and they, the British, the, uh, I think the British carrier Sheffield. Yeah, uh, yeah but that was, it. that was later, wasn't it? Was that later? This is early now, this is early in the year, in December, I mean, uh, in the winter time, that we went up there to look for it. But uh, we couldn't find it, we, we looked everywhere. We stayed out there a couple of days patrolling around. Yeah. We had to watch out for icebergs, <laughs> icebergs too. But uh, that's what he told us. He said we would ram the, we ran the battleship Bismarck, and but we never found it. That was it. Then we came back to the uh, United States. We sailed back from Iceland down to Newfoundland. We stopped at Newfoundland, Reykjavik. Uh, I can't think. Uh, can't think of the name of the town. And then we came back in the. Uh, Did you go in into New Argentia? Uh, Argentia. Yeah. Yeah. Then from there we came back to, to New York. And, and what it, when you came back to the States, uh, did you have a few days to turn around, you know, reload well, the ship? Yeah, oh yeah. And you got Liberty then? Liberty, you yeah, that's right, yeah, in New and York. When you sailed out of a place, uh, how, how long was it before you knew where you were going? Who finally told you? We're off to Alaska or whatever. Well, a day, a day or so. We knew the guys that start talking about it, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, a guy used to do the sound and he used to tell me where we were going. Well, we had a good idea where we were going on. But uh, when we came back from that, that trip from Iceland, we went into New York and uh, and we was just laying low for a couple of days, loading up for, for stores and then then we got a, we got a, 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 what do you call it, our sirens and horns started to blow. We knew there was something wrong. We had to get back aboard the ship. If we were on a dock, we had to get back. And we went out, we, that's where the, uh, the blimp saw some submarines in, off Atlantic City. And went down there and had to get rid of them <clears> because there was a convoy going out the next day or two. So I don't know how down they, they knew we were there, but they were. So these blimps, which, they, probably came out of Lakehurst, I think. Yeah, probably, yeah. Um, they saw submarines? Yeah, they, they were run over. And, and you guys in New York were notified about this? Yeah. We and, had you, to go. and you went looking for the subs? Yeah, we went out looking for them. And, and did you see them or find them? And well, the, the blimp gave us credit for a couple anyway, a second, because they, they, they could see, you know. And uh, they, I think a couple of the other destroyers, we got credit for a couple of them. Tell us, tell us what uh, what it's like to attack a, a, a well, submarine. Well, you go out and uh, the, the, they hear, they have the sound and you get soundings, and uh, the, they go up there and then you get a good sound and you drop dip charges. They fire the side dip charges and they drop the the ones off the end of the ship. They roll roll the big uh, barrel. Uh, they roll them off the ends. And then you're going along a pretty good clip, you know, 
when you're doing this. And then they, they blow up and, and then, you, then you circle around again, then you pick up some more sound, and then you try to find if you, if you hit them or not, look for debris and all that. But that's, that's what we did. While, while this was going on, what specifically was your job? Uh, well, where, where were you? Were you? Well, we were on our guns. We were, I, was, I, was, I was in the handling room on a five-inch gun. That, that, to take the shells up and put them, to send them up to the, the turret, you know? Okay. That was my job. And I put the shells in the, in the turret, take them up in the, in the turret. And, uh, and then, then another fellow would shove a powder through, a, through the gun. The gun, the, the bottom of the gun. So you're below decks. Yeah, no, below the gun. Yeah. How well, did how did you know what was going on? You, you know, your your ship is in a battle now. Yeah. And it's against the submarine. Did you have a talker or somebody? No, no, just you? the guys up in the gun. And they're yelling down to you what's happening and what they're saying. Yeah, if they want, if we yeah. want to know anything, they tell us. They could tell. They could yell to us. But they would, uh, the 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 head the head guy the. On the gun, he'd have the phones on, and he'd hear it, and he'd see it. And then uh, we go. And what, then, what were the five-inch guns shooting at? Well, we, we, just, we were in there. We, this is now, this is, this is like uh, general quarters. We were at the gun waiting. If we had to use the gun, we'd use it. If, but, if the sub is driven to the uh, surface yeah, the, by yeah. the depth charges, yeah. you guys are going to shoot at it. Yeah, that's right, exactly. Yeah, that's right. And you did this twice. You sank two subs, or well, got the, the blimp gave us credit for two subs anyway. Yeah. That's as far as I know. Had you, when you were ashore, you, this is off of Atlantic City. Had you ever had an opportunity to go down to see any of the New Jersey beaches at this time? No, not that. All time. the oil that was on the beaches. No, no, not that. No. Blackouts, brownouts. No. Can you remember what New York was like during the war? Well, the, in terms uh, of lights and you know, it was all dark and you know yeah. at nighttime, yeah. But it wasn't, it wasn't as bad as the day wanted to be. You know, everything was pitch black. Was, everything was lit up, you know, somewhat. I I have not asked you, but are, are you on the same Lansdale all this time? No, you're on another ship. I was on another destroyer, the Loose. The loose, okay. What happened to the Lansdale? Well, the Lansdale after I left it, uh, in uh, in uh, so I think April, April '43. I left uh, Lansdale. Well, that was, and uh, and I got transferred to the loose then. Now April '43, and they they got sunk in, uh, I think in March. No, no, they get sunk. Well, they got, they got, the ship got sunk a year later in April. Which one? The Lansdale. That was uh, in, the, in the Mediterranean, over by Italy. That's where they got, they got hit by a, a German uh, uh, plane, a sh uh, shot a torpedo and no one. So a lot of guys who had a lot of my, I lost a lot. I lost a couple of good friends of mine. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was sad of that. How did you hear about it in in the Navy? What's what's the scuttlebutt or the uh, unofficial way well, the news to travel? Well, I didn't there? I didn't hear about it right away. I, I heard about it later on. Well, after I was on the the Lansdale, I didn't know the Lansdale could sunk right away. Yeah, you must have been uh, very shocked to hear. Yeah. This. Oh yeah, I was. It was really a. Uh, Really sad for me. I was. I was were your were your duties on the loose the same as they had been on the? Oh yeah. Day? I was on the handle room with the gun, and I was on deck force, you know, tying the ship up and cleaning it up every day, every night. He used to have to sweep it down two or three times a day and wash the decks. Oh yeah, clean sweep down <laughs> yeah. four and a half. Now hear that, this. That, that's right. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I used to. I used to have, I, I had a lot of fun in the Navy, but there's a lot of hard times in the Navy too. Tell us about a, but a, the, a fun time. The fun times. Oh, yeah. geez. Tell us about a fun time. Oh, geez. One time we came came back from. This is one time we came back from Casablanca, 
and everybody had bought powders for their girlfriends and stuff, all that high. So we were sleeping in our quarters, you know. So everybody started getting stupid, just throwing a little around. So anyway, we had a big perfume bottle fight down the, down the everybody stuck. <laughs> I am it. <laughs> that was that was funny. That was really funny. He had to clear out the barracks to, to get some sleep. That's that's the first definition of a powder <laughs> monkey, right? <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ, that's a, that was crazy. Yeah. And yeah. what what about a hard time? Oh, hard times. Oh, also, uh, you know, when you you out there looking at it, and a ship would get sunk, you know, the, like we would they had a, they had a convoy and in the submarine. Uh, the Germans were smart. I think the Germans were the smartest. I don't know, they were really smart. They, they were the smartest ones around. They had, we were, they call them, what the, what the hell they call them? The wolf packs? What were they call them? The Germans, what they were. That's right, the, the wolf, wolf packs. packs. Yeah. But they used to have, and they, they, they have one race come up out, out a surface, and they wanted you to chase it. So once you leave your uh, leave your section of your your convoy, then they send another a submarine into your into your area, you know where you left. So that's how they would get inside of a convoy and do a job. But our captain was just as mad; he wouldn't leave. He kept uh, uh, destroying our position, and we, he made us fire. We fired uh, five-inch guns at the submarine. Either we hit it or uh, they went off somewhere, but that's what that was, a, that was a tough time then. You said a moment ago that you had seen ships being sunk or sinking. Oh yeah. Tell us about that. And, and this is in the convoy. Yeah. Well, this one they got in there. They they sunk one ship and it just went down. We couldn't even we couldn't even stop this convoy. Couldn't even stop to pick up uh, pick up the guys. They had to get somebody else to do it, but we just couldn't do it. Our convoy was going, and the injuries just kept going. And it was really hard, you know, to leave the ship going down. But the, the Germans, they were, uh, I don't know, they, were, they had some smart guys. You said you worked four hours, slept four hours, worked four hours, mm -hmm. slept four hours. Yeah. When you went to your bunk or hammock, you're supposed to sleep four hours. And you know there's submarines out there. Some guys are trying to kill you. Did, were you able to sleep well? Oh yeah, did you? yeah. We well, slept. I slept. I slept well. Everybody did. There was no, there was no big deal. You knew we had to get up and go. And uh, I don't know. I don't. Know, most of the guys, they, they, if they got hit, they got hit. That, that was it. You know, that, that's the way they felt. You know. But uh, we never, you never took that in the hand. You never took it. You know, you know how you used to be at home. Everything went wrong. Well, that's the way it was in the Navy. For me, it was. Yeah. And that's the way it was with everybody. They weren't. Uh, they really weren't that uh, scared or leery about it. But I suppose if they got to know, we got into a big battle. Or, you know, and, uh, you know how these big. Uh, they had these big battles down in the islands there. The ships and everything. Well, that was kind of tough. We never got into that, any of that right away because we were over this side. We we mostly contend with submarine duty. Yeah, and and your notes uh, speak a lot about the Atlantic, and you were in the Caribbean. Yeah, and yeah. then England, uh, back and forth. Yeah, to North Europe. Atlantic. But you mentioned Casablanca a minute ago. Yeah. How? how did you get there, and why were you there? Well, we went there when they, when they invaded Casablanca. So you were in the North in the North African invasion. Yeah. Well, we, not the first not the first bank, but the next one, you know, the second invasion, you know, like the second part of it, you know, we got in there, and we went in there. So, and then we had uh, brought some ships in. We brought we were bringing a convoy in, and we dropped the convoy. Then we had to stay outside. And and wait and, uh, and just protect whatever was going to happen. So our ship, our ship was going to be moved, moved down for another berth. And so five or six of us had to get off the ship and go down to this other place and tie it up. When it, when it come in, take the lines and 
put them on. So we did that. And then when, after we did that, we tied the ship up where they were still fighting. You know, this is, the soldiers were up at the, on the front fighting. So I said to the guys, let's go up and be with the soldiers for a while. And they said, well, you, you can't do it. I said, come on, come on. Well, I'll, the whole bunch of us ran up, we got in the lines, and we were up there with our sailor hats on. White hats, and run, 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 run around, the guys shooting and everything. And uh, so then uh, then one of the guys saw the ship start to move out. They thought I was going to leave. So they, they said, come on, we're going to go back. The ship was gone. So we, we let them guys, they, they went back. We stayed with the soldiers for a while, and then, then we left them. And then the, the cooks come up along, the, they said, you got to get out of here. So we went. So we're going back to the ship now, going back, and this guy says, halt. I says, I says what the hell is he yelling about? Who the hell is that? Halt. I says, get, get blocked. This guy just fired the gun. He says, you goddamn fools. He says, we'll shoot you if you enjoy. Yeah, I said, for Christ's sake, well, you see us with the sailor hats down here. I'll, I'll do all for him. He says, we got to do that. He Who says, was this guy with the rifle? Well, the soldiers, or the, you know, the MP, MPs, or what the hell are they call them? The guys are yeah. guarding you, and guarding things. Uh, so he, he was he was watching out, nobody get in there. To, you know. So I, we we didn't know who the hell it was. We just were you, were you in the city of Casablanca? Yeah. Is that where you were? Well, right outside of Casablanca. Yeah. yeah. That's a pretty big place. See, yeah. You know, you well, could get lost. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, that's a, but you got back to your ship, okay? Oh yeah, we'll get back. All right, <clears throat> we stayed there a few days, and and uh, some guy, another another funny thing that happened was uh, they, they, we were on the ship and we were doing a, a gun duty one one afternoon, one night there. So uh, me and my buddies were, were on the thing, we were on the gun duty, and uh, and so the bridge, they called us. This is a drill. I said, for Christ's sake. I said, oh, ah, that drill. So the, the guy is yelling at me. So the, my other buddy, the buddy I went in the Navy with, he was on the other phones. He says, Bobby, give me the goddamn phones. So I threw the phones to him, and they put them on. He says, the guy up there, says, this is a drill. He says, you, you do what I we tell you to do. I'm like, crazy. What the hell are you handing a drill for when you're sitting there, and he's, uh, either, either there's an attack or nothing, you know? That's the way. That's the way I was. Uh, I didn't get How long had you been in the Navy then? Uh, then? Yeah. In a couple, a couple of years. Two, uh, almost two years now. Yeah, right? two years yeah. anyway. Yeah, about, about that. You were getting pretty salty, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> getting off the ship and going up and yeah. joining the, yeah, the yeah. soldiers. And yeah. Where did you go from Casablanca? Back um, to the States? Yeah, we came back to the States and got into a big hurricane. Yeah. But uh, we made, uh, we, we, were, we got a, a caught in the hurricane coming back, and my buddy was up on the bridge, the sound man, he said, Bobby, we made zero miles today in the ocean. We didn't go one mile at all. Just zero. That's nothing. How did you take that rough weather on a destroyer? Uh, that, you know, oh, not bad. I didn't mind it. A lot, a lot of the, you get, get tossed around though. Were there guys with you who never really got used to the rough water? Yeah. Was sick all the time. My my my, my buddy there. Yeah. This Ben, this is the one I was afraid of. He got sick the first days we ever went on the ship. He was sick for a month or two, and I used to bring him up, up, up meals every day. We sit on the back of the the stack, and sit there's like an umbrella there. I sit there and I, I give him his meal and he eat. He could eat while he was up above, but he couldn't. He couldn't go down. And, he couldn't keep nothing down. But it lasted for about two months for him. And you never Until got he, sick. I got sick twice. Two. The first two days I got on the ship, I got sick. As sick as a dog. I didn't care if I, I didn't care if the goddamn thing yeah. sucked. Yeah. <laughs> if it sucked, I would care. I don't care. Somewhere in here. Um, I've got that you went to Atu. Did you go up into the Alaska? And, yeah, with the, uh, yeah, that was with the Loose. Yeah. The destroyer Loose I was on What now. were you doing up there? 
we had to patrol up there, watch out for the Japanese. It was that was that's where they were going Is this to be? the Japanese were up there. Yeah, the Japanese. That was the. They were at Kiska and Atu. Uh, Atu, Atu was the Fizz Island now. Yeah. And Kiska and uh, Adak, all of the island. Well, we patrolled all that area. Went up into the north, up into the, you know, up north there, uh, in Alaska where it comes by Russia. Up there, up there. The Privilof Islands? Yeah, way up, way up around yeah, the thing. Dutch Harbor, you were... It's oh, a, yeah, we were... I don't what, know. what was the weather like there? Was cold, it, real cold. And foggy, lots of fog? No, no. No fog? No, no. We never, we never got in any foggy, not too many. Not too many. Did you ever run into the Japanese? Ships uh, well, or planes? Or uh, no, we didn't. We, we looked for them, but uh, we, looked for, we looked for a couple of pilots that got shot down. Oh, they we couldn't find them. If we did, they were, they were frozen anyway. We couldn't, couldn't save them. And you, we, you found pilots? Or we looked for the records, yeah. 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 Isn't this about the time the Battle of Midway was taking place? I don't know. I don't know. Way off. I, I mean, really far off. Yeah, uh, but the the they're going up to the Aleutians was a kind of diversionary thing. Mm -hmm. Did you know that the, another big battle was going on at the same time? No. Well, when we were up there in, the, in, the, in uh, around the Alaska, there we uh, up there we were just doing our work. We had to go out every day, come in every well, stay out lots of times for a while. And come back in. We picked up a. We had to go out and uh, uh, pick up a, a tanker, a big cargo tanker, a broken half. So we had to tie it, get it, get, it, get closer to it, so we could get lines. There's some guys still on it. They tie it up, and a big seagull and tug had to come out and pull it back, pull it in. That was a rough time, a rough seas up there. When when you were sent up there. What specifically was the mission of your ship? What were you supposed to be doing? Up in Alaska? Yeah. We were supposed to uh, be watching out for, and, you know, if Japanese was going to invade there. Yeah. Anybody, anybody coming in there, the thing. So uh, we did, uh, that's what we were doing every day. Just, I destroyed a couple other ones, you know, just going out there every day, looking and looking and, the sound and go out to soundings every day. And this was... Uh, but then we went... Go yeah. ahead. This was just a couple of destroyers, right? What? You, you and another couple of destroyers. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, division, a division of destroyers. What if you had run into a cruiser or something? Uh, well, you had to fight one of them, that's all. You ram it, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Whatever. But uh, we, uh, we went... After we went up there, we were throwing... We got orders to go up to uh, over to Japan, up northern Japan. There was this island, Pamashiro. I don't know if you heard about it. And we we're supposed to go up there and see what what kind of gunfire that they had. You know, if we got close enough for the island. So we went up there. And we went up, went up this way, and came down like that. And well, was, I don't know how many destroyers. Well, six or seven of us anyway. Come down and fired all our guns right under this island, right at the base. And every, every ship was firing the guns, five-inch guns, all, all at once, firing, and see what kind of gunfire. They had plenty of gunfire. So we did that. We did it about six times when we were up there. What did they respond with? What, how big were their rifles? <laughs> well, they, they shot back at us with the, with the guns, and the, well, they I sent mean, out the little boats there. Big, bigger than five inch? Could they drive you off with these things? Uh, no, 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 I don't think so. Our uh, five inch guns could handle what, the, what they had. But they, uh, they fired plenty of, plenty of stuff, and then they sent out little torpedo boats to try to sink us. But we, we uh, sunk a few of them. But uh, When was this? This is in, this is in uh, 40, let's see, uh, 43, late 43, the... Uh, I don't think I, I've ever heard about this, and this this was the Japanese-held islands there? This was part of Japan. Part of the but, main yeah, islands, but the, yeah. the, the northern, northern islands, there were like two or three, like, like the like Alaska, you know, yeah. the islands there.
Is this the Kuril Islands? Pamashuro, they call it. Okay. Pamashuro. And uh, we fire there, and the, we got plenty of gunfire. And I think they were doing that to see, to see what uh, uh, we were going to drop the atomic bomb. You know, we were going to invade Japan at one time, but they wanted to see what, what firing power they had. They had plenty. And then if we if we had invaded Japan, we would have lost millions of people, millions of soldiers. Japan would have been twice, hundred times better than the, the islands. Uh, for you know, fortification. Yeah, I think it, it would have been tough. Yeah, it would have I, been tough. Um, I I see that eventually, you went from the loose to a carrier. Yeah, did, did a baby did, carrier. Did did you do other things on the loose that you haven't told us about? No, Sailed other places. No, we just you know just did that there and uh, and then I. Uh, I went. I we were up for nine months up at the, at the Lucian Islands. Then come back. I came back to Hawaii, and they transferred me. I don't know why, but they transferred me. And I got the next ship got sunk. Can you believe it? The, the, the loose was the, 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 the loose got sunk in the in the, in the springtime of forty three or forty four. I think forty three, forty four. I think they got sunk. The loose did. It's 44, early 40, that was Saipan, the Marianas. Yeah, yeah. But then, you see, after, after, after I got off the loose, the loose had gone down into, the, into uh, down by Guadalcanal, New Guinea, the Philippines there. They were doing duty there, and that's where they got sunk. Torpedo, do you know? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah uh, Japanese plane with, you know, those torpedoes on them. That's what I, I, I got the book at home. I got the book and I read about the rest of it. And so that's two ships now that. that they, yeah, it was all got sunk. Yeah. It was sad. It was very sad. But you got off before and, uh, they were yeah. sunk. Yeah. And now, now you're on a Jeep carrier? Yeah, this is a, a baby carrier. They call them baby carrier. They're converted, you know. And uh, we just did like. Convoyed, uh, well, carry. We went down to different islands with planes and dropped them off for the big carriers or whatever. I don't know what the hell we were doing, but that's what we were doing, I think. You were ferrying planes to where they were yeah. going to be used. Yeah. What's the name of your carrier? The Munda. Munda? Yeah, Munda. Do you num remember the, na the number of it? It's okay. I, I just, no, geez, I okay. Don't. I, I had it, that's what I had the papers. I had them in my car. I had uh, my discharge. We, we can look it up, yeah. that's okay. Tell us about serving on a carrier now. That's totally different from what you were yeah, doing but, before. Yeah, well, I was, I was still on deck force. You do, you do what the deck force do. That's what we did. And, uh, and uh, you were, I don't know, we were on a 40 millimeter, Got you know, on a GQ or on a forty millimeter. So you're you're instead of five inches now you're into aircraft. Yeah, we want forty millimeters. Yeah, forty and twenty millimeter guns. Yeah. We didn't have the five inch then, and uh, I don't know. And that's, we just went to different islands, went to Okinawa, and Guam, and all, all the islands, and took uh, took airplanes. That's as far as I know about that, and then uh, I didn't stay on. I didn't stay. We didn't stay on the carrier that long. Tell us about other islands that you went to. Did you get get down as far south as the Philippines? We got. Down, I got down to New Guinea and. The, the, oh, you did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We got down the islands down there. And did you ever get off when you pulled into one of these places? Uh, or did you, did you just unload no, the planes just, and then take? Yeah, we, we didn't do too much of. Liberty down there, just the islands, you know. And uh, Hawaii will get off, and we, but down there we never, never got uh, too far. I never took too much liberty down where there. Where did you get the planes at Pearl Harbor? You're picking. Where did you pick them up? Well, I think we did pick them up at Pearl Harbor. We and did. how many runs like this did you make? Oh, Christ, we were making runs almost every, every, you know, every two or three weeks we make a run, you know. 
wouldn't take you that that long to go to go to these islands. No matter how far they are, you going to, you know, your ship is going 20 knots uh, 24 hours a day. Yeah, you know, and as as a coincidence, um, the man we interviewed in this room a week ago did the same thing. He served on the the Casablanca was the the name of his ship. Oh yeah, yeah and he right. did largely what you're telling us about today. Yeah. So, and I think there were 55 of these carriers, all taking these planes down to the South Pacific. Yeah, right. Yeah. And you you talked about Guam that you'd been to. Yeah, Guam. By Guam. Did, did you get off and see any of Guam? No, I never. I never. I never took liberty. Just you know, on the, on the docks or what. If we're anchored out, we just stayed on the ship. That's all. I never. I never I don't try to go on the islands too much. Uh, let's let's get an idea of what the date is now. Um, are you into later forty-four? Yeah, it's just about forty-five. Yeah. yeah. Now, now after I got the hunger, that's about what we did on the on the uh, carrier. Then I got on this hospital ship, and that was uh, I spent a year on that on that hospital ship, the sanctuary. And when, it, it, when did you get on a hospital ship now? I, got, I don't have that in my notes. No, I know you don't. I, got, I, think, I think it was a 40, 40, early, early, it was 45 anyway. I spent a year on a, on a, on a hospital ship. And what, what was your job on, on board uh, that? Deck force, the what? pain, you know, pain and all that, yeah. all that kind of stuff. The name of it was? Uh, uh, sanctuary. Sanctuary. Yeah. Mm. In forty, early forty-five was the uh, Iwo Jima. And uh, did you did you get? Uh, well, we, yeah, we went in the we went in the Holland. Now th this is what I'm going to tell you about the the hospital ship. We uh, we were always alone. We went went to uh, went out to sea. And no, nobody with us. No no destroyers. No nothing. You just had the red. The big red cross. Big red cross painted. Yeah, it was yeah. white. It was all white. Yeah. And we went, uh, and we went, uh, we went to Hawaii. Then we, from there, we went to uh, start to go to these islands. So then we get out to uh, around by uh, Japan, out that way, Okinawa, and them places. We used to go out. We used to, we used to be cruising around just to, to see if our ships or any ships or. Around, you know, broken up. I look for anybody. Anybody had to see us, they'd come. They'd fly over and and uh, they bring uh, bring people over there. But we picked up uh, some passengers and you know they were on the ship. You know, but when they dropped the atomic bomb, now we were we went back. We went back into Japan. And we were we were over there. But when we dropped the atomic bomb, we had to go in there and pick up all American prisoners of war that were in Japan. Uh, were you, where in Japan were you? We went to Nagasaki. One of the cities that had been bombed. Yeah, well, that was one of them, yeah, Nagasaki. Did you get off your ship? Oh, yeah, we over there. We Tell did. us what Nagasaki looked like. <laughs> Nothing. It was, it was all, all busted up, Nagasaki. You see big uh, cranes, and that was like a big shipyard, the city part. That was blown apart. Buildings were all, you know, half down, down everything. What about casualties? Well, I don't, Japan, I, we, all we were there for was to get our people out. These uh, were prisoners of war? Yeah, prisoners of yeah, war. What kind of shape were they in? Well, they were in tough shape. They were in a pretty bad shape, and when we got them, when we got them out, uh, we got them out. We took our launch boats and went in and got them off the island, off to Japan. Brought them back out to our ship. Out, we were anchored out in the bay. Brought them out there, and uh, and you bring them up. You bring them up in the, these these carriages. You know these. You no. Know, a sling. A sling. Yeah. Was a little, like wire. You, you bring them up there, you bring them up, and they won't let you touch them. You couldn't even touch them. You, know, you have to help Had them. Had they all been burned? Well, I don't know if they were burned. They were in the, like a disaster, you know? 
They weren't even healthy. No, no. And uh, they wouldn't let you touch their bags or nothing. And when this, and some of them we were lost later on with TB or whatever they call it. They died there, but it was a really sad shape. I, 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 wanna, I felt so bad for them. I want to come back to that in a minute, but uh, if you're in Japan now, we've skipped Okinawa. And I, and I want to ask you about that because it was, as you know, the largest land battle in the Pacific. Mm -hmm. What did you, what ship were you on at Okinawa? You were on, oh, the, the, well, you were on the carrier? Yeah, I was in the carrier with Okinawa and I was on the hospital ship in Okinawa too. Tell us about what you saw at Okinawa. Uh, well, uh, Okinawa was uh, just, you know, it was an island like the rest of them and we just went in there and uh, it was, I, I, I couldn't tell you much about, I don't know that much about them. What about the kamikazes? Oh yeah, well we never we never got to that. We never saw them. They were they were already at battle there. We went in after the battle, I guess. The the hospital ship went in there. If there's casualties, we picked them up. I don't know. I don't know what we did. But uh, you you served on a destroyer, then you served on a a, a, a jeep aircraft carrier, and then you were on a hospital ship. What is the difference in your mind on being in a fully armed ship and then you get over to one that's got red crosses on it <laughs> and puts its lights on it? And yeah, I, yeah, right, and, yeah, and exactly. How do you feel about that? Well, I didn't feel too bad about it. It didn't bother me that much, but uh, I guess some of them did, you know. They, they were bothered by it, but we, I used to just do my regular work and, and just did it. What you have to do, you have to do. And that's the way it was. But uh, we, uh, we, in the hospital ship though, you had to be, I don't know, see they had to be liked, liked by everybody, you know. You, you want everybody to like you and stuff. To take, go in there and pick them up and, you know, take care of them. That's what I think we had to do. Where did they take all these badly wounded guys? Well, we took them, we kept some of them, we made a trip back to Hawaii, dropped them off there, then went back and got some more. You took them all the way back to Pearl? Well, I think yeah. so. I think we did yeah. one trip anyway. And uh, and we had some, some had died on the ship. You had to take them back. And, uh, but then we took them back to the islands and the planes would fly them home, whatever. But, uh, <coughs> oh. Well, we took, uh, we had a tough time, but the Japan was a, was a, it was a disaster at that time when they, they dropped the bomb there. It was kind of tough. I don't know what the hell it went on with the, I don't know if we went in there and took care of other people on the, on the island. I think the army hospital, you know, took care of the, and we, because we took the people off the, were we'll captured and everything, and brought them back. Uh, brought them. The the only people you took out of there then were Americans. Yeah, so American people. How about uh, British, uh, French, anybody else? I don't I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. Uh, they they could have been some from there, but I couldn't tell you. Was your ship crowded with these injured people? I mean, jammed. Well, yeah, after, after, after we were Japan, yeah. it, we, we really got loaded. And, uh, and we, uh, and we, what do you call it? Took them, uh, took them back to, the, to some of the islands. But it was all right, we, we were big enough to take a, quite a few of them anyway. But the, the carriers, uh, we took a lot of them back too. Took a lot of, really? they, yeah. they, they took a lot of people back. But we were, I want to tell you about a, a big storm we hit in Japan, and the, and the Admiral told us to ride the storm out. We lost a couple of destroyers in that storm. The sunk. Was this the famous typhoon that? Uh, well, yeah, whatever yeah. they call them. Yeah. And we were over there, and, and our ship, our ship was a pretty big ship. That was almost twenty thousand ton ship, and we roll, we roll to capacity almost. The guy was on the show, on the bridge up there, 
Well, he said, well, we're two or three degrees from Tipperobel. Bobby, that's how, that's how bad it was. Capsizing. Yeah. yeah. We rolled this way and then rolled back. And, I, and at that time there, we had a, a kid in, uh, on, on the ship. He had climbed up the, climbed the ladder to go on the watch on the king post. There, two big posts and there's a bridge up there. There's a lookout in the middle. And he, had to, he was going up there and he freezes on that ladder, on the, on the, on the ship. And so Jesus Christ, our chief, chief McElhaney, he says, anybody go up after we go up? I said, I'll go get him. He said, Bobby, you go, you go, all right. And I said, I'll go get him. He said, he's a sailor, he's our, he's our buddy for Christ's sake. You had somebody out there. So we went over, we went out there and the, the ship is rolling back and forth. I said, he says, you be careful. I said, okay, I get out to the ladder. I got ran out. I got up that land, I got a hold of it. I knew if I could, damn, look at that. I knew I could get him. So I went up, we got halfway up to the, the king post. It was just going back and forth. And I said, look at now, I can't say it. I don't know his name now, his first name. But I says, you, you take a, you take a, when I take a step down this ladder, I says, you gotta take one with me. I says, don't you dare, stop. He says, all right, Bob, you're all right. So we, <laughs> so we started down. We got down, so we finally got down to, to the deck, you know, where you get up. And I said, look at it. I said, when the ship rolls this way, because that'll be, the water be on that side. I said, we'll get off and we'll run, run to the deck. So we did, and we made it back. We were lucky, we were safe. But that, that's the way it happened. But, uh, but you, you saved this guy's life. Yeah, so what? Well, uh, did anybody give you a letter of commendation? No, or no, nothing. nothing. There was never, nothing was ever written up about it. I don't care. I was my, it was my buddy. He was a sailor. He was a sailor like we were. We had, yeah. to, get, had to get him. But the only, the only one, the, one, the, I, the chief is the only one. He knew that we did it. Uh, McElhaney, Chief McElhaney. He was a, he was a, he was funny. He was really funny. He's a good chief. <laughs> I'm glad you said that because um, I wanted to ask you, in, in all the time you were in the Navy, is there some character that stood out that you remember? Some guy, was it this chief? <laughs> yeah, he was. He was a character. Tell us, tell us about him. He, well, he was funny. He was good. And he, <laughs> I, I can't say the swears. He said, well, we, we do something. If not, not the one right, he say. <laughs> you know, that's it. That's the, way, that's the way he was, you know. And uh, he's kind of low key. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But then, and uh, if we tied, we were coming into Japan one time, and we were like a bunch of, like a bunch of what do you call it, all torn up, <laughs> pants are all, and we're t tying up to the docks in Japan now, instead of, and I, I captain, uh, geez, he was a beauty. I don't know. What he was. But he kept coming in and he hit the other. He hit the other ship. He tore off stanchions like that, the light, light stanchions like that. And it went right against it like that. And he comes into the dock and he hits the goddamn dock. And the whole, the whole, the whole dock shook my crazy. Almost went down. So, and, and then we finally got anchored up. But Jesus, what a wild! It was wild for us. Japan people were running around yelling and screaming. You know, you know, so something else is going to happen. Pretty though. bad seamen. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was, uh, it was uh, really something. Did you well, ever read the book The Cane Mutiny? No. Well, it's about a, a captain who uh, <laughs> banged into docks. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, was in a typhoon. Yeah, there was a lot about what you've told us today. <laughs> it sounds like Herman Woke yeah. uh, wrote about his. <laughs> there's any other characters that you think about that you served with? Um, a little, there's a lot, a lot of guys around there. Oh, I used to pal. There's a guy in the hospital ship. His name was Howard Last, and me and him we used to <laughs> we used to raise hell. We used to have paint fights. <laughs> Brush, paint brushes, black you in the face. 
you painted, and we did that. We chased each other around the around the ships, and you know, just battled with one another. But not nothing serious, fun, no. fun thing. That's you what you we were to, just bored. It sounds. Yeah, like. right. Exactly. Yeah. And then we used to go over and paint the side of the ship, the cross. We did that. Yeah. Then all, all that kind of stuff. Let me ask you this now after you've talked to us almost an hour uh, what was the worst thing that happened to you in the navy the worst thing oh jeez i don't know what the worst thing in the hell could i do i don't know <laughs> i really don't know maybe um, it's something you saw that you you know you were a kid from out of Massachusetts, yeah, and you're yeah. out at sea. And yeah. what's the worst thing you ever saw? Well, I, I, I was, I was amazed by the icebergs. When I saw the icebergs, I saw Jesus. There were some real, real high ones, you know. And then look, look out there. And I was, I was really, you know, stunned over that, seeing these big icebergs. And, uh, and uh, what the hell else did we do? Uh, we did a lot. Of we did a lot of things that, I don't know, I just can't think. That's okay. Move your mind a little in, in a, another. You told us once about the uh, the powder puff fight that you guys had. Yeah, oh, Jesus. And any other funny yeah. thing that yeah. happened to you? <laughs> there, was, there was one kid, one kid that he uh, used to pal with us, Freddie Morris, and he, uh, he used to be a, uh, he used to be a, uh, he was going up for coxswain, to be a co taking a test for being a coxswain. Yeah. And he, he asked Ben, my other buddy, the one I went to train with, Ben, he said, and we'd, we'd test them. We'd test them. We'd say, now, Freddie, here's, here's the questions. He had the questions, and they'd, and they'd be the answers. So he studied them. But he studied them. He studied them all in alphabetical order. So Ben, Ben would go down and he says, there's something wrong here. He's, he knows these things by heart, you know. So Ben was going down. So he changed. He said, instead of giving him the fifth question, he gave him the eighth question. And it's, it knocked them all out. He didn't know what that was. Oh, you know, he, he was out of sync. <laughs> he was out of sync. Yeah. So it was funny. And then, and then, he, then he finally, then finally he told him what he did. But he passed. And he got it. Then he was a... Uh, then he was caught one time in the, in the, out of Liberty, and he took this girl out, and he was, uh, was a ill repute, you know? And uh, so they, they picked him up. Uh, oh, I'll tell you about it. Uh, I'll tell you later. Uh, took, this, took this girl, and she said, uh, Whispering won't help. Huh? <laughs> yeah? I'll Try tell you about it. it was something else yeah. that happened to me. Yeah. But anyway, he takes this kid, and they, they arrest him. And so he says, uh, so they get him up there. And so the captain says, well, what the hell happened? What, what was the rest of it? Said, so he says, uh, he wanted to pay the girls uh, the fine. For the, he says, well, I got one good man on the ship. <laughs> took, out, took, took out a girl from the, from the what do you call it? Ill repute. Ill repute, yeah. <laughs> says, so you want me to tell you about an incident that happened to me that, that I... I was uh, I was out in California now. This incident that you said was a bad a bad incident. Yes. Well, I was on. Well, I, my question was, what is the worst thing that happened to you yeah. in the Navy? Well, one of the worst thing. Well, this is one of the worst things that happened to me. I was I was uh, out shore. Was in Shoemaker, California, and we went to uh, uh, went to uh, me and my buddy went to. Uh, out drinking, you know, drinking and having something to eat. And uh, the shore patrol and the uh, MPs were, were doing work. And uh, we came out of the bar room and, and our hats went on perfect. And, and our cuffs, our cuffs were rolled up. So the shore patrol guy says, button up, straighten up. I says, all right. So I says, I'll, I'll get them, I'll, I'll straighten them up and everything. So I don't know what got into this guy. He says, he says, do it, and I, he kept after me. So he grabbed me by the collar of my shirt, and he slung me to the street. You know, he grabbed, the, grabbed one of the Navy collars, you got, he had a guy right off his feet. 
and he saw me at this street. And I got up, I was so, I don't know what the hell happened. I got up and I says, what the hell did you do that for? And I went, get straight. So he raised the club that hit me in the head. I took the club right out of his hands. I was so goddamn mad. And I says, so when I did that, somebody else come up behind me and cracked me in the side of the head and split my ear wide open and split me, tried to knock me down, knock me down again on my knees. And I got up off the, I got up off the street off my knees. I says, you'll never put me in jail, you bastard. So I went, I went after him. And I started to, I started to beat one guy up. So they, they grabbed me from behind. This guy got the choke. Uh, what do you call it? And he, uh, I'm on my neck ch trying to choke me down. And then he hit me with clubs in my stomach and my ribs and everything. And they knocked me down again. I got up again. And I says, so they, they couldn't put the, the show patrol and MPs couldn't put me down. They had to call for the the police, the Haywood, Haywood California police. And they came over and they were doing. So they cut the they cut the cuffs on me and I tried to break them. That was making my <laughs> head swell up. I said, "You over for me?" So he says, "I says you bastards." And I was swearing and everything. I was wild. So I, they they finally they got me in the cruiser. They had the, they were six of them. They finally threw me in the cruiser. I kicked the front seat right out of that cruiser and everything. And they got me down to uh, they got me down to jail, the jail, and they threw me in there and. They, and then one, I said, you, you guys are crazy. You don't know what the hell you're doing. So I wanted to get out, and I couldn't, I couldn't shake the bars. I did everything, but I, I finally fell down and went to sleep, right? So here comes down, the, here comes the show patrol. They come down, down after, and here they are throwing water on me. They wake me up. They woke me up, and I said, you son of a bitch. I was swearing, crazy. I went over there. And this guy, this kid there is about my height, and he's yapping at me. He was, he's being a smart ass. I reached through the bars. I just missed them. Just missed the shirt. I said, if I had caught you, I said, I would have dragged you right through these bars. You wouldn't have lived this. Tell the story. And that was one of the worst things that ever happened to me in the Navy. What did they do to you for that? Well, what they gave, was the punishment? Yeah, they gave me bread and water. For how long? 30 days bread and water. Yeah. Every fifth day you get a meal. And then, uh, then I spent a few days there. I think a few, uh, well, wait for my ship. To come to get on my ship again, to come back in the bay, and, uh, it was in the, so with, uh, it was down in uh, it was down in San Diego. So they sent me they sent me sent me to the train with a gun on my back. I was, thinking, I was a criminal, and they were going to shoot me if I did anything. They give the there's a chief there had to take me down to uh, San Diego. He was going to San Diego. They said, so, I said, so he says, what the hell are you doing bringing me a, a gangster, <laughs> a criminal? And the guy says, no, you, you take him down there and you're the handcuffed on the train. Put him on the train. And she says, no, for Christ's sake, take the, the handcuff. He's all right. So they left him on. So I sat down on the train. I, so I told the chief, I says, Jesus, I got to go to the bathroom. He says, don't you do anything. Wrong. I says, I'll be the best guy for you. I'll never give him another problem. Did they bust you? No, I was a seaman. They couldn't have bust me any further. You were as far down as you could go when you started, <laughs> yeah. yeah. A seaman, that's all. Uh, what, what but I loved you, the Navy, I loved the Navy. I got the impression that you really did. That I you did. had a, a good time, but there were bad times. Yeah, there were bad times. Yeah, where were you discharged? In, uh, in New York, New York. I think it was New York, Brooklyn. I think Navy Brooklyn Yard. Navy Yard. Yeah. yeah. I think it was New York. Yeah. And that was in December of 46. Yeah. Right? Well, so said, you, you put in uh, five years for yeah, the United five, States well, Navy. Yeah. Yeah. Why five years? That's an odd number. Yeah. Well, it would happen when, when uh, the war got over and they started, they started decommissioning ships, putting ships in mothballs, 
You've heard of that. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Put the ships in the wall. And all they did was scrape paint and paint them. And I said, oh, Jesus, I don't want to do this. I put it in for, uh, I put it for two, two places. I couldn't get them. I was down in uh, Florida, put the ships in the mock walls. And, uh, and they said, so they come on the thing, and they said, if anybody wants to get out of the Navy, it's got the time. Got the time and you can get out. So I had five years of that. I says, well, I don't want to do uh, scrape paint. I said, I want to go home. I yeah. Might as well go home. So I would have. I think I would have stayed in if I didn't. You know, if I was out to sea. But you'd had it up to then. And you, yeah. Right. Yeah. Did you join any uh, veterans organizations? No. No. Are Are you a member of any organization now? A met veterans no. group? No. I just. I just nothing. You'd uh, put in five years in the Navy. What kind of reception did you get when you came home? People glad to see you, family yeah. glad to see you. Yeah, my mother, yeah. father, they were, and yeah, you were, everyone was glad. And in December of 45, uh, you were kind of late. A lot of guys had been home quite a while. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, did you discuss with your family what you had done in the Navy, the things you'd seen and uh, done? Oh yeah, I told them. I told them a lot of things I did, a lot of things I did, and, uh, and a lot of things you didn't do. Yeah, that's right, exactly. Yeah. How important to you was serving in the military? Was that an oh, important part of your life? Oh yeah, it was great. Why? Why? Because my country, I, the country's at war, and I was one. I wanted to be part of it. I went, I'd go any day. Even today, I'd go. Uh, then it started the war. Did you? Do you feel in, in any way, uh, Bob, that being in the Navy affected your life one way or another? Good for you, bad for you? Well, good for me. Why was it good, good for you? Navy was real good for me. Well, it, 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 I was, I was very, I was bad in school. I wasn't, I wasn't really a, a good uh, scholar, you know, school, whatever you want to call them. I was real down. And I, when I went in, when I went in the Navy, the Navy gave me a chance to do, go see things. I know, I would never, the farthest I ever went when I was a kid was in South Natick, you know, yeah. from Wildsea to Natick, or Framingham. And you wound up in Japan. Yeah, I wound up to Japan, and way yeah. up to Iceland, way up in Alaska. I mean, how could you do that if you never went in yeah. the Navy? Good point. Nobody could do that. Yeah. The, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I maybe maybe wasn't in the, the worst the battles in the, in the world, but I enjoyed. I enjoyed what I did. It was, uh, in that sense, very educational. Yeah. That you got to see foreign countries. Oh yeah. yeah. Talk to foreign people. Saw uh, Nagasaki right after the yeah, big bomb. Yeah. 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 Your timing was very good there. Yeah. Do you feel that the reception you got when you came home was uh, different from the one that guys who had served in Korea or Vietnam got? Was there a difference that, that you're yeah, aware but they, of? You know, they didn't, they, I, didn't, I don't think the government treated the, uh, the Vietnam uh, guys right. They didn't give them a, a reception like the World War II people got, you know? They, yeah. they should have got a little... I mean, it wasn't a war. They, they went there to the police, the police thing, but it ended up as, a, as bad as a war. What I mean, the, the poor guys, they, they come home, they come home dribs and drabs. And they weren't even considered, I don't know. I don't know what the hell they did. And then a lot of them were, got in a dope, and that was the worst thing that could ever happen to them. That was too bad. I feel bad for a lot of them when you see them, you know. The one when they came home. Dressed the way they were and everything. I felt bad. I don't think it was right. Bob, is there uh, any any one thought, any one incident, any one thing we haven't talked about this morning that you'd like to put onto the tape so your family can see it or People looking at this tape a long time from now uh, will know about. <laughs> I don't know. I, I wanted my I wanted my grandkids to go in the Navy. You know, I don't know if he will or not, but I want them to, Eddie.
already. And uh, uh, I don't know. I wish I wish that people would uh, consider the uh, the service life a little more. Uh, I think it'd be good for them. I think uh, I think everybody who comes out of high school should serve for two or three years in the service. I think it wouldn't wouldn't hurt them at all. I think it'd be good for them. Bob Nahas, thank you. Thank you very much all for right. being here today. <laughs>